Hi everyone, in this video we are going to look at the different type of retaining wall. The structures that, that hold the back soil of earth when there is a change in ground level, you will see them everywhere along the high, highways, in basement, around the bridges and even in gardens. Let's go through each one step by step. Number one, cantilever wall. This is the most common type. It looks like an L-shaped wall made of reinforced concrete. The bottom slab has two parts, the two in front and the heel under the soil. The weight of the soil pressing down on the heel helps keep the wall stable. The vertical board called the stem resists the pressure from the soil behind it. This is a simple, strong and economical for medium heights. That's why it's used so often. Number two, cantilever wall without two. Here, the front board, the two, is removed. This type is used when there isn't enough space in front of the wall, like beside a road or building. It still works on the same principle, but since the base is smaller, it needs extra reinforcement to stay stable. Number three, cantilever wall without heel. This is the opposite. The heel is removed and, uh, and only the front to, to the slab remains. It's useful when we can't dig behind the wall. Maybe because of an existing structure or property line. The stability here comes mainly from the wall's weight and the pressure on the two. Number four, cantilever wall with searchers. Now imagine there's extra weight or load on the soil surface behind the wall like parked vehicles or a building or an embankment. That's called a surcharge. This extra load increases the pressure on the wall, so it must be designed stronger without thicker reinforcement or a wider base. Number five, cantilever wall inclined backfill. In this case, the soil surface behind the wall is not level but sloped upward. But sloped upward. That slope adds extra pressure on the upper part of the wall. So engineers design the wall accordingly, sometimes with more thickness or deeper foundation to handle the added lateral load. Number six. Cantilever wool, concentrated load. Here, instead of an even pressure, there's a point load. Maybe from a heavy structure or a column sitting close to the wall. That's a concentrated force. Increases behind stress at a particular point. So, the wall must be reinforced carefully in that area. Number seven, counterfort wall. When the retaining wall is very tall, simple cantilever design isn't enough, so vertical concrete webs called counterfortes are added at the back of the wall. This act like hidden braces Connecting the stem, the base to the base slab, reducing bending stress and making the structure more economical for large heights. Number eight, gravity wall. This is one works on a completely different principle. It's made of heavy material like stone, concrete blocks, or masses concrete. It doesn't rely on reinforcement. 
it resists the Earth's pressure just by its own weight. This are simple to build but need a lot of space and materials. So they are used for a smaller wall or when stone is easily available. Number nine, buttress wall. This is similar to a counterfort wall, but the supporting grips are placed on the front side instead of the back. This buttress push back against the soil pressure, making the wall stronger. They are usually used when there is space available in front of the wall and we want to reduce the bending in the main stem. So, in summary, cantilever walls are the most common for medium heights. Counter, counter fort and buttress wall are for very tall or heavily loaded cases. Gravity walls are old school but still reliable for short heights. Each type depends on the site condition, available space and load requirements. And that's it now. You know all the major types of retaining walls from simple gravity walls to reinforced cantilever system with all their variation. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more civil engineering video. Thanks.